Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 FY22 earnings conference call of Grafen Industries Limited. We have from the management Mr. H.K. Agarwal, Managing Director, Mr. Jayan Doble, CEO, Global Chemicals and Group Business Head, VFY and Insulators. Mr. Jayan Dua, Chief Executive Officer, Chemical Division, and Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you uh, and good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, so FI22 till now has been a defining year for the company as the company accomplished 75 so successful years of its incorporation. So we are privileged to continue with legacy of our founding fathers of the company and thankful to our fellow colleagues, shareholders, customers, and all the other stakeholders who've been part of this wonderful journey. Uh, so one of the pillars of our uh, you know, 75 years of existence has been resilience, and uh, that has come about from our commitment to the growth. Uh, we have continuously invested in our capacity expansion, technology advancement, and process improvement in our co, co businesses. Today, when uh, India Inc. is making new capital commitments, India is well, uh, sorry, Grasim is well ahead of the curve as we had planned our capacity additions in core businesses ahead of time and now nearing completion. So one of the important themes in this quarter is project commissioning. Starting with VSF Velias plant of 600 TPD VSF capacity at uh, Velias, uh, 300 TPD was commissioned in November 21 and the balance 300 uh, TPD has been commissioned uh, just uh, this week. So the total VSF capacity has increased by 37% to 810 KTPA from 591 KTPA. With the growing domestic demand in VSF, we are confident of fast ramp up of this capacity to make additional capacity available to our customers. In the chloralkali business, uh, as of quarter three FY22, uh, 91 KTPA caustic soda plant at Rehla is fully commissioned, and Balbadrapuram phase one plant is partially commissioned with 26 KTPA. The total capacity will augment, will get augmented to uh, 1,530 KTPA by quarter one of FY24, because there are a few more commissioning that will take place from 1,147 KTPA today. The chlorine value added uh, plant, chloromethane uh, plant of 55 KTPA at Vilayat was also commissioned in quarter three of FY22. The total CapEx amount budgeted for the entire year was uh, uh, 2,604 crore, and that was excluding pains. Uh, for nine months FY22, the actual amount spent stood at 1,476 crore. We'll, we'll certainly close the year uh, well within the budgeted CapEx amount. For the paints business, we have received two rental clearances for two parcels of land. So, uh, you know, the CapEx in those two sites will get accelerated. The CapEx spent amount is at 505 crore uh, uh, till now on pains, which is towards uh, mainly towards acquisition of land parcels. We completed disinvestment of uh, fertilizer business on 1st of Jan. At the time of uh, announcement of the transaction, uh, which was more than a year back, the enterprise value for the disinvestment of fertilizer was at 2,649 crore which included the outstanding subsidy amount at that time, which was part of the working capital. 
the final consideration amount received by the company on 1st Jan 2022 was at 1,860 crore, and this is after adjusting for subsidy already received from the government during the year, and there has been small adjustments on account of CapEx and working capital. With this sale, the company has turned net cash positive on standalone basis again after a gap of 12 quarters. Performa net debt adjusting the December end net debt with the proceeds of uh, fertilizer comes to negative 432 crore. Uh, sustainability has been another key area of focus for the company and we have incurred more than 500 crore in the last five years and uh, uh, this is in BSF and uh, they have earmarked a total amount of 1000 crore uh, towards achieving global standards. Uh, the BSF business has taken the target to achieve net zero carbon emissions across all its operations by 2040. Grassim participated for the first time in uh, Carbon Disclosure Project, CDP, in uh, 2021, and has received management band score B-. At Grassim, our commitment to improve the quality of ESG data reporting is increasingly being recognized by the uh, external world. In another major achievement, the company has received Gold Shield Award for Integrated Reporting and Excellence in Financial Reporting, so these are two awards from the ICAI. Another theme emerging in the quarter was unprecedented rise in uh, prices of crude and uh, derivatives and coal, etc., uh, which uh, emanated from demand supply imbalances, logistical challenges created by country-specific COVID restriction, and these have continued unabated. The VSF business has witnessed almost 400 crore plus of cost escalation uh, sequentially. Grassim's backward uh, integrated model will provide relief at the time of such extreme volatility in the prices as the rise in costed prices, for example, aids, chemicals, divisions, performance. There are uh, business-wise initiatives like improvement in consumption norms, improvement in share in, of renewable energy, which will all benefit in the long run. I'll briefly touch upon the key performance, uh, you know, operational and financial performance. The strong uh, operational performance of ESF has been induced by strong demand for textile products in India during Q3 FY22, despite state specific restrictions. The domestic textiles value chain has been operating close to its peak capacity, which is led by demand uptick and is evident in the share of domestic sales, which increased to 91% this quarter from 84% in the last quarter. The share of value-added products in the overall VSF sales mix has increased to 29% on sequential basis from 27%. In terms of volume, the WAP volume has gone up from, from 41 KT to 46 KT, an increase of 11% to QOQ and 46% to YOY. And why volume becomes more important than uh, 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 value is uh, uh, mix or the percentage is because uh, the gray capacity has gone up due to reliance uh, expansion. Uh, VFI business also reported a strong operational and financial performance on a sequential basis driven by strong growth uh, in demand and improvement in realization despite the cost pressures. The Viscos business reported net revenue, including VFI, of 3,335 crore and EBITDA of 401 crore. The VFI business reported a revenue and EBITDA of 574 crore and 80 crore, respectively. The international cost of prices witnessed an upward trend for the fourth straight quarter. The domestic uh, caustic uh, soda prices went up on back of domestic demand and higher international prices. The caustic soda capacity utilization touched multi-year high of 93% in Q3, up 7% sequentially. The eco is at all-time high with revenue increase more than offsetting the cost increase due to power cost. VAP performance suffered from cost pressures and uh, weak demand as well. 
The advanced materials, i.e. epoxy business, have also witnessed a YOI improvement in the operational and financial performance, driven by a better product mix on the back of strong demand from the wing segment. However, epoxy segment is uh, witnessing some cost pressures which may impact margins going forward, mainly due to timing difference. Uh, the revenue and uh, EBITDA for chemicals this, uh, division stood at 2,338 crore and EBITDA of 528 crore respectively. Uh, the standalone performance overall for Grassim for Q3 was strong at, with, with revenues up by 56% to 5,785 crore and PAT up 46% to 522 crore on a YOI basis. At the consolidated level, the same figures uh, uh, were that revenue was up 16% to 24,402 crore and PAT up by 26% to 1,746 crore for the quarter on YOI basis. Uh, with this, I would like to hand over the call back to the operator to take it forward. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question at this time may press star and one on your phone. We have the first question from the line of Naveen Sahadio from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So two questions here. One, in DSF, uh, you mentioned operating rates in China are at a record, like you know, at, at, at a decent high of 83 uh, percentage, but yet in December end we have seen like you know prices coming down. On January, I don't think there is very uh, good recovery. So is it all this attributable only to the Chinese uh, New Year related uh, uh, sluggishness, or is there some more issues around it? You want to go That's with your fun. second question as well, so that we can yeah. answer. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you for this. So my second question then was about the paints business. Uh, glad to hear uh, we've already received environment clearance for two plants. So would it then be appropriate to ask which locations are these, what capacities are these, and by when can the plant see the light of the day? Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Navneet. Uh, on your first question about VSF operating rate in China, so it touched a high of 85% for some weeks, and now it has come down to 82% and uh, even 81% after the Chinese New Year. And inventory has also started to move up. During the Chinese New Year, most of the VSF plants continued to operate, while the winners, our customers, did not operate. So there was accumulation of inventory buildup. And this is a normal uh, phenomena in China because this Chinese New Year is every year phenomena and there is a typical buying behavior. So many spinners buy the VSF before the Chinese New Year because they expect that after the New Year, the prices are normally higher than before the Chinese New Year. So they try to hedge their costs before. So it is uh, just the one week of uh, post Chinese New Year, uh, operators are still opening. The spinners have not yet fully resumed. The downstream is still uh, not fully open. So we have to see. So price uh, going down is uh, just uh, normal uh, because inventory had gone up and uh, there was a lull, dull activity. So we have to look for the clear trend uh, now in coming weeks. So I hope this uh, clarifies your question. Yeah, yeah, helpful. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, understand that will, given that cotton has been on a rise sustainably, but we haven't really seen that kind of a sustainable uh, increase in BSF. So I'm just trying to check, do we expect prices now to improve or it's still, you're saying, difficult to really take a call on that? The prices should increase because cotton is all-time high 
and uh, now obviously staple fiber prices are also increasing on the back of uh, higher fuel prices and there is a historical correlation between vsf psf prices and vsf cotton prices uh, of course uh, the cotton and the vsf prices have uh, diverged and this kind of uh, gap is uh, unprecedented and uh, that is because on cotton there are a lot of financial players also and uh, there is a expectation of uh, more shortage in cotton whereas in vsf the competition among chinese players is a little bit more intense than it, we would like to see so that is the reason but we expect the prices to go up and uh, to some extent cover the cost increase uh, more than what it has been the case last quarter Okay. Yeah, that's, and Navin, that's really helpful. Yeah. And Navin, to your second question, the ECR received basically for our north-based plants, which is Panipat and uh, Lubyan. And we should actually receive ECs for others as well uh, soon because south-based plants we were the first ones that we had signed up with the state government. Correct. So, so congrats on that. And uh, I think I'm sure investors will then be very keen to also know that. Uh, since North uh, EC has received, so definitely more color on this as to what is the capex outflow that we can look at and the timeline for the plant commissioning, what capacity. I think that color will be really helpful. Thanks. Sure. No, the point noted. I think uh, we we are again early stages. I think land generally is a little bit always unknown how much time it will take when we look at EC. So now that we are also gaining more visibility on land and ECs. So hopefully by next quarter we'll be able to give you more picture on the capex, uh, uh, you know, forecast and other stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Nirav Modia from Envil Research. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, my first question would be in terms of uh, value-added VSF, I think we have reported best ever quarterly volumes uh, in terms of the value-added volumes, like it is up 56% from the start of the year. So my question is, sir, how much further we can take these volumes based on our current value-added capacity? And if we can add further that how much more capex we need to incur in order to, in order to take our value-added volumes to 40%. Which is our long-term goal. So, Nero, uh, the question is very uh, interesting question. So, we are running our web capacity almost uh, to the full, uh, but we have the flexibility to convert uh, some of our uh, lines which produce gray to web, depending on the demand situation. So. Uh, like we have been waiting for schools to reopen for uh, uniform market to pick up so that we can make more dope type fiber, which is one of the web. Uh, we are running our uh, Excel plant, which is biocell category of uh, VSF to almost full, but we are also experimenting with increasing the capacity marginally. And uh, Riva Eco is one uh, product where capacity is not a constraint, but uh, it depends on the seasonality of buying and uh, getting more orders from them. So by end of uh, next year, we hope that we will increase the web volume significantly. And along with increasing the web volume, percentage wise it may not increase because our gray capacity is increasing significantly so denominator is increasing so that is a different thing but we are also increasing our realization on web product as much as we can so on both sides uh, we should see expect better performance on web product category so sir, last time on the call you explained that uh, since we have some, some sort of fungible capacity where we can uh, uh, improve our uh, Leva eco production, but with this, uh, won't it shrink our uh, premium of uh, the margins, what we get in the value added VSF over the gray VSF? Because then we are already at the optimum level of utilization for the Lyocell or the model, probably, which you mentioned in your opening remarks. Yeah, so we can convert one more line from gray to modal, uh, depending on the market situation. So. In India, it will take time for market to catch up, but then for some time, we may export more modal out of India. 
so this is always a, a matter of time for the demand to catch up capacity can be increased in one step uh, wherever we can so is a like a increase capacity then market increases and we utilize the capacity fully then we again find out ways to increase the capacity sometimes it can be very small increment sometimes it has to be a little bit bigger step increment in and so like if you can put some sort of uh, capex numbers for improving our volumes of uh, wrap to 40% that would be helpful sir so not significant capex uh, except in uh, excel excel will need significantly more capex but other wraps we can increase the volume without much capex so Got our focus will be to increase the wrap uh, other other wraps other than excel got it sir Uh, so my second question is on uh, the uh, VSF again. So uh, in the opening remarks, you mentioned that VSF business has seen a cost increase of 400 crores sequentially. So if you can attribute the increase in the power cost out of this 400 crores, because even on a sequential basis, we have seen 350 crores increase in our uh, power cost. So some sort of understanding there in terms of uh, the increase in the cost from the VSF business. so out of 400 crore roughly 120 crore is uh, on the energy uh, power and steel together like mostly natural gas and coal etc okay okay so, see i i think to answer your question i think you're probably talking about power is cost increase at overall gas and level yes correct sir correct yeah but that is mainly on account of uh, costing because that's the power intensive uh, plant uh, business rather Uh, so VSF, uh, you have to focus on the increase in the pulp cost and the caustic cost. That's the primary reasons for the uh, part of that 400 crore that you're seeing, and that's an absolute number that we've given 400 crore. Yeah. So of course, because of volume increase, also there may be some variable cost increase. We're just comparing quarter and quarter to say there's a 400 crore plus increase in the variable cost. So. And sir, uh, is it possible to share, like, in terms of our increased capacities, both for VSF as well as for the caustic division, how much currently we are based on captive requirements, and probably some sort of capacities we are also adding in the renewables also. So let's say when when we will be utilizing our both the capacities optimally, how much would be our power integration? If if you can share. So. Uh... so we have shared our renewable capacity share right where we are uh, going up to 10% with whatever group captive schemes etc that we are going to so that's roughly that and then about uh, uh, 40 50% is our uh, captive uh, power from what we on vsf so we have 100% capacity yeah. power because yeah. we need steel and power yeah. in a certain ratio and steel we cannot purchase from outside but on floor alkali side we have 50% power from grid and renewable okay uh, sir if i can just squeeze one one last question based on the uh, bookkeeping question so it's like on the pulp jv we have reported the losses so just a clarification that is this because we have produced some 25000 tons or probably sold 25000 tons of lesser volume sequentially because of which our uh, profits are lesser because if i do some arithmetic calculation in terms of the realizations what we have reported i think we would if we adjust those less volume sold we would have been in the profits from the pulp jb so is that understanding correct yeah your understanding is correct we had some reliability issues in our plants in the last quarter and uh, that resulted in lower uh, production and uh, then when the plants doesn't produce then there are on the contrary more expenses on maintenance and uh, on some energy thing so it become compounded problem becomes compounded so your understanding is right if we had produced uh, as fully as per the previous quarter then we would have been in uh, profit Thank you so much for answering the questions in detail, sir. All the best, and I'll join back in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Neeram. The next question is in the line of Chintan Chera from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. My first question is related to caustic soda. 
so so we are in a very good cycle of caustic soda right now but the performance of ecu division continues to get negatively impacted by chlorine so i just wanted to understand like what are the plans of the management to tackle this issue so i think uh, fair point uh, so what normally happens if you look at the industry chlorine becomes the kind of a bottleneck for caustic supplies to increase because chlorine can't be transported i mean that's the first understanding we need to get and when the run rate of caustic on prices is good everybody maximizes caustic production and typically chlorine gets into negative and that's been the historical record in india because in india the primary product is caustic and the by product is chlorine which is reversed in the global scenario because of pvc so what we are doing at this point of time and you would have seen and you would have heard ashish talking about the projects so one large chlorine derivative project cms got commissioned in vilayat and uh, you would have also seen the press note of this time which talks about ech which is now going to come up in 25 so there is a progressive work which is happening on chlorine integration in the business it is going to be a couple of years before our current captive consumption which is a fluorine of around 29 30% will jump to around 45 50% and that journey i think as we keep on adding more and more products in uh, production and you know we'll keep saying but that's clearly a line of focus for us going forward and you're seeing the initial work on it come through in the cms part okay so at suppose say 40% kind of uh, utilization of chlorine will that uh, impact on the spreads uh, will not be negative uh, like what can we just uh, get to the sense on the uh, margins basically how can we just lead to our margin improvement so, so i think you need to look at chlorine when i talk about chlorine capital consumption of 40% that's the chlorine derivatives what we are talking about then there is hcl also and then there is tunnel sale which happens so overall if you look at a 93% capacity utilization that means 93% of the chlorine produced is coagulated in the plant so that's the thing so there are three or four ways you cut chlorine and look into it what we control in our own production facility is today 31% which will go to about 45% over the next three or four years yeah and and the margin impact on that uh, will certainly be positive and but but each derivative has a very different margin uh, because the end uses different chemistries different so it's very difficult to say what the margin improvement would be uh, on an overall basis but uh, each product is very very different it's not a range it's not a, it's not a straight line which you yeah. can do but clearly if you see from a negative tunnel sale of chlorine outside market sale the margin accretion is positive okay and how much we sell through pipeline today we we have approximately on a enterprise basis about percent which is on the pipeline uh, we have our own consumption at about 30 hcl takes another about 12 15% and about 35 40% goes through our tunnel sales okay good uh and sir my second question uh, is again related to caustic soda so we are along with you there is couple of more players who are adding capacities uh, very soon uh, in india so then how do you see this impact on the overall caustic cycle for the domestic market here you have to go a little bit into the history uh, and if you look at the last uh, about a four quarter history india has been at a discount to cfr sea for some time in the month of january which we'll talk about in the next quarter is when they both have and this is a step curve any country which will add you know capacity in any such product will go through a 18 24 month cycle before it normalizes and it comes back so as capacities will come up in india you will see going forward logically excess capacity of production but again here the question comes back to your earlier chlorine consumption it will be the chlorine capacity utilization which will drive the caustic capacity and not the other way around okay so probably in first half of fy23 when a lot of capacities come on stream you could see a weaker second half in fy23 is that the can be the right logical assumption i think we should not look that far ahead 
particularly with the volatility caustic prices have been going through even in a month from a $900 to a $475 so my take is yes fundamentally every time a capacity comes in it does create market pressure but i wouldn't really look that far ahead at this point of time okay got that thanks for the answers you thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of pratik kumar from antique stock broking please go ahead yeah green sir uh, my first question is on <clears throat> on um, uh, bsf pricing versus cotton so uh, the way cotton has risen in terms of pricing has there been any demand destruction for for cotton customers uh, and some of them have moved to us uh, i mean maybe not to us but to some of the other international players because our export mix seems very less uh, so has there been any migration of cotton customers uh, to bsf Uh, in global markets and maybe also in india uh, yes so uh, think it happens because when the delta is so much it is natural for the textile people to start uh, using more of bsf and uh, optimize or reduce the cotton consumption uh, they can divert they do divert some spindles from uh, cotton spinning to bsf spinning and also at the fabric stage they can do more blending so all kind of uh, levers are there in the hands of downstream so we are seeing very robust uh, use of bsf in india and also globally so it's clearly happening now how much uh, i will not uh, be able to give you a precise number but uh, it does happen and it is happening um, but a number of uh, volume of bsf at 157000 uh, doesn't look very extraordinarily high versus i mean we are use we are doing 140 150 anyway earlier uh, like last year and with the added capacity also uh, mm-hmm. i mean with in such environment why industry is not able to sell much more uh, in terms of vsf we were selling whatever we could produce so that was our constraint and now since uh, we have already commissioned the additional capacity so we expect to sell more so Uh, now we have more material to sell and we are able to sell uh, increasingly higher volumes uh, in india that is our first preference because uh, then we don't have to incur high shipping cost uh, and now in both businesses are 90 plus yeah so now we are at like quarterly capacity of around 200000 odd so from q4 onwards uh, uh we should like model number of volumes leaving aside some external factors like covid uh, impact but uh, number up for the 180000 or 170000 should be doable on a quarterly basis yes so our india vsf capacity in the so voice is very low i think uh, so our india vsf capacity has uh, with the commissioning of new lines uh, has reached about 8.1 lakh tons So on quarterly basis, we should expect uh, fairly equal uh, volume, uh, say quarter one next year onwards. So this quarter we will be stabilizing the new lines, and uh, there will be some keeping uh, uh, challenges. But from next quarter, we should expect uh, reasonably good increase in the volume on both of our capacity. okay and just one more thing uh, given we have capacity constraints and given a uh, cost has increased so much from quarter to quarter year on year so what uh, stops us from taking more price hikes to offset uh, our uh, increase in cost because our profitability has halved almost uh, in this bsf segment over two quarters uh, from around 40 rupees per kg to 20 rupees per kg uh, so uh, is it import competition because we are largely selling in domestic So what prevents us from taking hikes, which could offset cost? As anyway, we are running at very high utilization. Yeah. So there are two factors we keep in mind. If we increase the prices, uh, yes, we can increase to some extent, but then there we are opening the risk of imports from China or from Indonesia, because after all, uh, everybody can uh, export even after paying the high shipping cost, and then we have to keep our prices in line with the possible landed cost of import. We do charge premium for the domestic supply, just-in-time supply, and all those things. But 
there has to be a reasonable uh, level. If the difference is too wide, then we are taking a huge risk of imports. And second is, if we increase the price, then yarn cost will be high, and then there is a risk of VSY yarn imports coming. So that is another uh, lid which uh, restricts our ability to increase the prices beyond a point. So we have seen that even if when yarn prices are very high, though our prices are not so high, but yarn imports come and ultimately it eats into our demand in India. So these are the two levers we have to always keep in mind. But we, we try to maximize our prices as much as possible. Sure, understood. And sir, what would be our premium to imports uh, from various countries in terms of pricing in OBSF? So, roughly about 3, 3%, 2 to 3%. I think last year, last time also we had mentioned that there is a conversion of landed and uh, this thing. So, you know, it's more or less conversion now. Yeah, we, we try to charge a premium for our quality, for our services, for just-in-time things and all those things, but we cannot be too greedy. Okay. Uh, sure, sir. These are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumangal Nimitya from Kotex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question, just uh, continuing the previous question, on our uh, cost, uh, VSF volumes, now this year, uh, assuming we'll be doing something around 630, 640, now 200 KT per quarter, uh, uh, we're looking at somewhere around 25 to 30% volume growth, both uh, in VSF and cost -A. Is that the right understanding as a ballpark guidance for FY23 in terms of volume growth for both these businesses? No, so you see, tough to give uh, volume uh, growth. I think it's easy to uh, calculate uh, when I said that, you know, we're running historically at 90 plus capacity utilization and we will run our new capacities uh, at that. We should be able to. So, Understood. Yeah. And, you know, the benefit yeah. that we have in caustic is that VSS has increased, right? So caustic will. Uh, new capacity has the capability to feed into that as well. And then on the eastern side, there is alumina capacity that have come on back of uh, uh, strong aluminum prices. So there is market out there. Uh, and VSF, I, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Aguan has already spoken about. Understand. So basically, in terms of uh, ramp up uh, uh, beyond a couple of months, we don't really require a ramp up period. That's uh, the understanding I'm getting, and also uh, we won't face any market constraints to place this quantity of volume in the market. Uh, so is that the right understanding of the discussion? Yeah, you are right, and uh, domestic market may say, take some time to catch up, and uh, in the meantime, if uh, there is any surplus, we can uh, export. But of course, the net back may be slightly less because of high shipping costs. But we do not expect a serious problem in uh, producing and selling the entire volume. Got it, got it. Uh, second question is with respect to the CapEx. Now we are uh, very close to uh, concluding our existing phase of expansion. Uh, what sort of CapEx will be left over in FI23? And in terms of a paid business also, next year, what sort of CapEx are we looking at? Yeah, so, so, so Mangal, I think right time to discuss that would be in the next quarter, uh, mostly when we would have finished our budgeting, etc. I think uh, for FY22, like I said, out of the balance capex that we there, comfortably we'll be able to finish uh, well within that uh, uh, approved capex that we've mentioned on the slide 7. Understood. Okay, thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Dana Bharat Seth from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I mean, a large part of the question has been answered, but structurally, if we have to look at, I mean, this VSF gray business, so looking at the kind of, I mean, convergence of import price and domestic price, so VSF gray as well as a VSF yarn, VF, VF. So how one really understand that which will be the demand driver and how the global capacity is and what level 
is operating and there can be a say for incrementally the way cotton prices are increasing and uh, us is putting a pressure from import from china which is a reflection of a high cotton yarn prices also so how if you can give some color that that will be a great help from say 2 3 years perspective Sorry, Bharat. I I think you know uh, some of these questions, like you said, is covered. Is there anything specific? Uh, uh, because I I think in terms of guidance, we don't give. Uh, no, I'm talking industry per se. Uh, what what's the specific question and industry? So how much is uh, sir globally VSF demand is in uh, in increasing VSF as well as VFI and the simultaneously how much capacity is available and. operating at what level and further new capacity which is getting added sure. okay so uh, on a global basis the cy21 demand for vsf is estimated to be around 6 million ton correct the capacity is estimated to be around 8.5 million ton okay so you can calculate the overhang or capacity utilization okay now new capacities Uh, there was some capacity addition in 2020 in 21 not much and in 22 there have been some announcements but we have to watch how much of that comes on the stream and uh, the demand is expected to grow globally around 4% around between around 4% and in india the demand is expected to grow at much higher rate because india is still uh, not uh, at the high maturity level in terms of vsf use so uh, in india we have added our capacity about 200 and uh, uh, 20000 right and uh, so you can now uh, understand whatever color you want to give to the industry picture and how much sir import is currently in india i mean and one is a vsf and second on vfy so uh, yeah. in india there is not much import yeah, negligible yeah. yeah not much import and yarn is again uh, open uh, commodity which uh, happen so statistics are available yarn is on the range of 80000 tons per year vsf imports are much lower than that you you have to look at yarn and fiber together Correct. Yeah, because of the because you know depending on the prices, yarn can start coming in. He's asking for VFY. VFY. Oh, VFY is a different thing. I think then you may. Yeah. And yeah. VFY about uh, two thirds of the Indian demand is meant to import. One third is meant essentially by yarn. And the value added product that we are talking. So how is a uh, that is really playing for the industry? The value added products are the. good for the industry because then indian uh, textile uh, value chain becomes that much more uh, high value adding and uh, it uh, it improves the industry structure and uh, is a reflection of uh, higher aspiration of indian consumers okay so the last question on this caustic co soda side See, we our capacity we are increasing almost by say by till till 25, <coughs> almost 50 percent from currently 10 lakh ton to 15 lakh ton. Correct understanding? Yeah, that's right. From that's 11, right. 11.47 JTPA to 15.30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how much sir, will that be then again now as you explain that to value added will be 40 percent by that time. in a for a grassing and so tunnel chain and all so how much that will be met and how much will be the where there could be a chances of a negative case there no so uh, let me kind of take a stab at your question so see i i think what we are talking about is increase in caustic right yeah uh, the, the capacity increase on a separate front we are working on chlorine derivatives also Correct. in each of our location that we are present in we are working on uh, chlorine derivative and what we have given as a target in 2025 of uh, you know 40 45% roughly whatever 
is uh, on account of this new derivative capex that we'll put up, which includes CMS, ECH, etc. Sorry. So that that's really what the plan is, and we are trying to put up both capacities in parallel so that you know it whenever there is extra chlorine that is getting created, we have some uh, project that is ongoing to absorb that part of that uh, chlorine that is getting generated. But at the end of the day, we want to avoid ton of movement. And just to add one more reference point, and I'm not getting into data with you, the chlorine demand is in, as growing at a faster rate as compared to the caustic demand. So right. clearly you have a positive cycle there relatively. Okay, because of this demand for my PVC. From my side. So there is no value added product in cost. Okay. Caustic is sold as cost. Caustic. The value added products are only in chlorine. Correct, sir. And they serve two purposes. They serve chlorine evacuation and they serve addition of, of value. Because chlorine, as you know, we sell in the trade market at low to negative price. And currently our captive is and how much in the pipeline that we are talking, so that will also be, a, do we have a plan to increase the, those? So we, we are continuously in talks with potential chlorine users who can then uh, come and pick up, put their plants adjoining to our plants. So that got subject of, get, they're getting their EC land availability, so lots of ifs and buts in that. So that's a constant dialogue which goes on with prospective uh, chlorine consumption players. Okay, so by 25... Sorry, we... so may I request Sorry. you to please... Sorry, please thank you. Please, thank you. Uh, the next question is from the line of Yash Chen from Choice Institutional Equity Research. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Yeah, hi. Hi, Yash. Yes, okay. Hi, sir. Um, this is Abhimanyu Kasliwa from Choice Institutional Equity. Um, sir, um, most of my questions were answered uh, so, um, I wanted to ask regarding the CAPEX, sir. If I heard correctly, 2604 crore CAPEX was budgeted for this year, and 1476 crore was completed. So, roughly 1150 crores, up to 1150 crores, you can say, is left for this quarter. Um, I wanted to know, and this might be a very uh, beginner question, but would this uh, 1476 crores include the 965 crores capex of on cement. Um, no, no, this is on a standalone basis. So okay. If I can guide you to the chart uh, on page uh, 7, we cover only uh, standalone businesses of uh, Grassim, which is VSF. So you have the breakup of the balance capex of 1,128 into VSF, chloralkali, and when I say other businesses, it's basically epoxy, VFI, textiles, insulator, which is all part of uh, Grassin. These are smaller businesses of Grassin. Understood, sir. Thank you. One more question, sir. Then, uh, since uh, uh, we have roughly 1,100 crores that we are hoping to uh, uh, complete by this quarter, um, are we seeing some kind of traction in that, or are we going to be well below budget? Uh, what do you see, sir? Yeah, so this is the reflection of uh, our ability to complete our projects at lower cost. So mm -hmm. we end the year with uh, lesser amount uh, than the spending that we have given. Okay, wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Modia from Envel Research. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, with respect to my earlier questions, I had just uh, one uh, addition to that. So you mentioned that we'll be adding the capacities substantially on the value-added VSF side. And uh, in your opening remarks, you also mentioned about the sustainability capex, what we have been doing on the VSF side. So uh, this would help us to bring down our cost of production. So if you can relate this uh, some reduction in the cost of production with respect to the slightly lesser realizations in the value-added webs because that would be more towards uh, dop dyed and the other fibers what you mentioned. So some understanding on this. Basically, my question is to understand that, let's say if some fall for the value-added VSF, how much we can compensate it through the reduction in the cost side? So 
actually these two things are uh, uh, not uh, fully related yeah uh, premium on uh, wrap uh, is a function of uh, market uh, situation and that okay. sometimes we are able to pass on the cost but many times like recently the cost increase has been much more than we can pass on and sometimes yeah. it may be that cost reduce and we don't have to pass on that cost reduction in the price yeah and uh, increasing the production uh, will not uh, reduce the cost because we are anyway operating at almost uh, 95% of almost full capacity so it will be a question of uh, which product we produce yeah and a uh, little bit of uh, de bottlenecking or increasing the production yes there will be marginal reduction in the cost but that will be uh, small not uh, very big thing and and just to supplement you know see i think if i get the direction of your question see over a longer uh, or a even even medium term horizon so the new capacities and the bottleneck capacities that are coming are all brownfield right so vilayat is brownfield and the de bottlenecks are in the same so you're not really incurring large capex to achieve those volumes so that's where the benefit of mitigating the cost uh increase or uh, any any changes in realization that's the benefit that you get by reducing the constantly reducing in fact every uh, year we come up with projects where we focus on reduction of cost overall for grasm uh, including the bsf business through technology etc now uh, on the sustainability front that you mentioned uh, uh see two three things one is sustainability expenditure that you do actually doesn't necessarily lead to only only cost you are able to get premium for your products from your customers because today customers are demanding that product right and because you have that uh, background now leva eco is uh, is 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 actually a, an example where you uh, work on your process your value chain your product to create a sustainable fully sustainable product and there you clearly get uh, premium over over the gray and the way the premium has to be looked at is not necessarily percentage margin over premium generally the prices of the specialty and wrap products is quite stable and the gray is what me moves up and down uh, so you you have to look at uh, look at the premiumization of wrap from that perspective got it sir uh, but sir like since we have been demonstrating a lot of examples in terms of the process intent intensification by almost like we have de bottleneck our capacities by 10% over last 6 uh, 7 years so is it fair to assume that once we utilize this capacities fully vsf probably fy23 or fy24 that, that that is a different topic but let's say whenever we will exhaust those capacity there is a further scope of some de bottlenecking which would probably come at a very lesser cap capex cost yeah we've done that in the past and we'll continue to find ways and means to de bottleneck and increase the capacity yeah okay uh, sir the second question is a bookkeeping question so like you mentioned that the performance for the epoxy this quarter uh has improved on a yoy basis so if you can quantify some percentages like how much it has improved uh, on a yoy basis that would be helpful sir so we don't isolate uh, epoxy and give that uh, figure so at the end of the day if you look at epoxy also it's in a way uh, a derivative of chlorine right you you make ech and then goes into epoxy in that way what has really happened in epoxy is that uh, the raw material prices of ech and bph etc has gone have been going up yeah okay and uh, some of it is getting consumed out of the inventory of the prices that we bought uh, in the past so therefore the cost uh, pressure is coming through because of timing differences what i had mentioned in my uh, opening remark to pass on the price yeah and and the you know inability to pass on that price uh, uh, at this stage okay sir thank you for the answering questions in detail sir thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of pratik kumar from antique stock broking please go ahead hello yeah thanks for the opportunity again so i have couple of follow up questions uh, on caustic uh, in caustic segment uh, 
so this uh, coal prices have started to rise again uh, uh, or have risen again after i think some softness which we saw in november december so uh, so are the pressure on uh, caustic segment margins again expected to come back or like industries again they thinking of taking price hike or the price will support the margins in that segment see normally there is always a lag between the prices of coal to our consumption because there is a certain amount of inventory all of us do keep you're right the prices did come down the prices have gone up again but i think at this point of time we believe that the caustic prices have reached a point where you know they're kind of stable Uh, the volatility in indian market is coming down although the, and so also in the global market so my belief is it's better to have a more stable pricing than a volatile pricing that we've seen over the last 3 or 4 months but uh, i mean being a very basic commodity what has like particularly helped them stabilizing the price as you suggest again it's the demand supply you see you've got a very good demand coming from the textile sector and you got a very good demand coming from the aluminium sector plus along with your soaps and detergent sector all these sectors have been doing very high on their own demand cycle which has led to the stability of demand and that's why you're seeing the run rates from 85 to 95% across multiple players and one last question on vsf inflation uh, so uh, uh, what uh, i mean uh, is this the pulp inflation expected to peak or is it already peak in in third quarter or is it more inflation is remaining like okay so all uh, prices uh, of lately have been uh, more stable than other inputs like caustic or coal or sulfur or zinc so all prices uh, are not going to show much higher volatility in the coming uh, quarter that is our expectation so i meant what we booked uh, pulp prices have been softening as we have discussed that here from earlier time but uh, what we have booked uh, uh, in terms of uh, our numbers uh, so should we start seeing that softening uh, lag effect uh, that you know we have always uh, talked about so we get the benefit or the other way around uh, the impact of the prices uh, almost 4 or 6 months uh, uh, down the line because of Yeah, because of two factors one uh, we follow the index of previous quarter this quarter supplies from our suppliers and then there is a long value long supply chain it takes almost uh, one and a half months for the pulp to arrive from the origin to destination and then there is always some inventory yep. so there is a gap of almost 4 5 months from the time of index to our consumption yeah so that's what i was asking so has the uh, lower cost inventory started to show up in our numbers or is it still uh, like six months away because the price of pulp has been falling for some time yeah so we have already passed the peak for the time being if you want a precise answer to your question yeah okay. yeah 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 so peak is behind us yeah sure thank you sir Thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments so no, thanks thanks for everyone's uh, participation on the call uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the next quarter please reach out to saket for any clarification queries that you may have on the numbers thank you thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Grasm Industries that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines